Hi guys, welcome to Theology Low and Slow. I'm Ryan, your host, and this is episode 9, where today we're going to tackle Galatians 1, 18 to 24. Now this will be the last part of chapter 1 before we start getting into chapter 2. Now, We've been going over. We've been going over the revelation the past couple of videos. Um, you know, we put um, some things, uh, ideas out. Uh, maybe that you might be uncomfortable with that you're a preacher. Sorry, <laughs> uh, but not sorry because that's what the scripture says. Um, and truthfully, so we are all preachers of the gospel, but we lined out how this is a one-on-one -on -one thing, not necessarily getting up in the pulpit kind of thing. Um, and how, you know, before we get to that point, though, there is typically a period of about, it, Paul went through three years. That's not to say that it can't be longer or shorter. But, you know, this idea that there's a period of time where we don't consult much of anyone or anything, and it's a time of seclusion, learning, uh, of being taught and shown things. And, and sometimes there is a guide to not teach us, but to show us along the path. Today, let's get into verse 18 to 24 and read along with me. Then three years later, I went up to Jerusalem to become acquainted with Cephas and stayed with him 15 days. But I did not see any of the other of the Lord's apostles except James, the Lord's brother. Now, what I am writing to you, I assure you before God that I am not lying. Then I went into the region of Sy regions of Syria and Cilicia, and I was still unknown by sight to the churches of Judea who were in Christ. But only they kept hearing, who he who once persecuted us is now preaching the faith which he once tried to destroy." And they were glorifying God because of me. Okay. Now, the first thing that, that I want to go through here is I want to go through all of these names, and I'm I'm going to add I'm going to add one um, one or two here, um, at least on the false gospel side. Okay. So let's kind of go through this a little bit. The first thing we've discovered it is the it's the false gospel versus the true gospel, right? Right. Gospel number one is the true gospel. Gospel number two is the false gospel. Um, it's the terms that I, you know, I have come up with for this video and things. This is the low and slow path, whereas um, gospel number two is a fast food kind of a theology of sorts. Last time, uh, last couple of videos, we talked about um, the couple of the core seven gospel verses, um, Gal uh, Galatians, Genesis 15, 5 and 6, and Habakkuk 2, 4, talk about how our righteousness is by faith. Um, gospel number two purports that it is by our works, which is why gospel number two comes and it always attacks uh, gospel number one. Last time we lined out the idea of the faith, right? We lined out how how you know this idea, and, and this is what um, this is what is said here um, in, in verses uh, verse twenty three. Said he who once persecuting us is now preaching the faith. Okay, I also talked about Habakkuk two four, where it, it says the righteousness will live by his faith. Um, that I believe is mistranslated in the Hebrew. That actually I believe should be the faith, not his faith. Okay. Um, but there's something over here that equates to the name of the faith that I want to, to get out here. And you'll hear me, I want, I'm lining these out because I want you to, I want you to be aware of the different things that, that I call these things. Any one of these refers to, you know, um, under the particular category they are. You will hear me talk about the doctrine of demons the doctrine of demons comes straight out of it's first Timothy four one. Okay? It is first Timothy four one. First Timothy four one says this. But the Spirit explicitly says in the later time some will fall away from the faith, paying attention to deceitful spirits and doctrines of demons by means of hypocrisy of, of the hypocrisy of liars seared in their own conscience as with a branding iron men who forbid marriage and advocate from abstaining from foods which God has created to be gratefully shared 
shared in by those who believe and know the truth. This is full of people who are nothing more than deceived. This is full of people who have had the revelation. Okay? And that is the difference between gospel number two and gospel number one. Some people are preaching gospel number two, um, no, no names, <laughs> Joel Osteen. <laughs> Oh, excuse me, I had a cough there. <clears throat> there are there are there are those who are out there preaching gospel number two who knowingly are preaching this false gospel. Okay. But a good majority of people over here are deceived. And if they saw, if they saw the truth and the revelation. They would understand and, and they would. The Holy Spirit of God is irresistible. <laughs> I'm just saying that when God opens your eyes to these kinds of things, um, there's no other choice but to be changed by it, to be transformed, um, to use the word out of um uh, out of Romans 12, uh, 1 and 2, to be transformed by the renewing of our mind. That, that whole scripture talks directly to this idea of a worldview shift when we have the revelation and when we get this directly from God. I am sitting here teaching it. I can't make you understand it. I can't make you see what I'm seeing. And, and, and there's nothing that I can do about that, but I can preach the truth of the scripture and whatever the Holy Spirit of God decides to do, um, he's going to do. So, and, and that's, that, that is okay because we don't have to, we don't have to fully comprehend gospel number one in order to be saved. All we need to do is quite literally what Romans 10, 9 and 10 says is, is, confess Christ as Lord of our life, and believe that God raised him from the dead. That's literally all that's required uh, uh, to be saved. And now there are, are, are things that we do, but, you know, as a result, obedience and stuff like that, but, but that's not what saves you. Um, this idea of, of confessing Christ as Lord, believing that God is going to do what he says he's going to do, that he's going to save you because he has said he is going to, John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he, became, that he gave his only begotten son that whoever should believe in him will have eternal life it's another one of the core seven gospel verses okay the core seven gospel verses genesis 1 1 genesis 15 5 and 6 habakkuk 2 4 john 3 16 hebrews 11 1 to 6 and Revelation 21, 1 to 3. Those are the six core gospel verses. And then the seventh that bookends both ends is Ephesians 3, 8 to 10. And see, this is where I want to go with this right now. This episode is, is the whole purpose of all of this. We're, we're going to kind of, we're going to get to Ephesians 3, 8 to 10. And, and this idea what Paul proclaims here. Okay, so three years went past after this period of seclusion and learning. He goes up to Jerusalem, stays with Cephas, Peter, right? Stays with, stays with Peter for 15 days. He didn't see any of the other apostles except James, who was the Lord's brother, okay? Now in verse 20, he gives an assurance that, that, that he's writing to you. He's assuring that this is the truth and not a lie. He went to the regions of Syria and Cilicia. Paul was still unknown by sight to the churches, right, of Judea who were in Christ. But they kept hearing that he who once persecuted us is now preaching the faith which he once tried to destroy. A person who is of the faith 
does not draw attention to themselves. They didn't know Paul by sight. I wouldn't know Paul if he was dressed in today's dress. I wouldn't know Paul if he walked in the church in five minutes. I've never seen the guy. I don't know what he looks like. I have no idea. And here's the thing. Um, it's not the point. Is that this is not about me. This is not about you. This is not about Paul. This is not about Peter. This is not about James. This is not about any of the disciples. This is not about Moses. This is not about Abraham. You see, this is not about any of us. This is about glorifying this whole thing is about giving God the glory someone who is of the faith draws attention to God not themselves because here I promised you Ephesians 3 8 to 10 the bookend of the uh, of the core gospel verses, the where it's what's it, it's what started, um, it's what started my friend off on his path, and it was where I kept coming to in my walk. Ephesians three eight to ten says to uh, to me, the very least of all the saints, this grace was given to preach the, to the Gentiles the unfathomable riches of Christ, and to bring to light what is the administration of the mystery which for ages has been hidden in God, who created all things, so that the manifold wisdom of God might now be made known through the church to the rulers and the authorities in the heavenly places. This is all about glorifying God and showing the wisdom of God through the church to these spiritual, this spiritual realm, these beings and these deities, that the, the little g-gods that we've been talking about. That is the purpose of all of this. Why does, God, why does God call anybody? That's it right there. It is to glorify God. It is to, to, to make known to the rulers and the authorities in the heavenly realms the goodness and the greatness and the wisdom of God, so that he may be glorified. The doctrine of demons is legalistic, or it, it, is, it is completely lawless. It's all about me. It is the fast food it is the fast food theology and we need to take it slow low and slow through the scriptures don't just read the scriptures let this absorb into our every fiber of our being as we move forward in, in the future chapters of Galatians 2, 3, 4, 5 um and, and, and Galatians 6, where it rounds out, um, we're going to walk through this idea and, and we're going to take it low and slow through here. We're going to go through this. We're going to take a look at the little nuggets that are hidden all over the place here. I sincerely, if you are still here by episode 9, I want to sincerely thank you for, for being here, for, for listening to this for for taking time to invest in your relationship with God. Um, my prayer, my prayer is that you become familiar with this. If you haven't had the revelation already, my prayer is that God opens your eyes if that is his will. It is not necessary that he does. But at the very least, I am going to preach this and I'm going to teach this. And if God chooses to open your eyes and open my eyes even more, um, because here's the thing, guys, I don't I don't know it all either. I, I don't know what the all of the all of this is. I really don't. Um, I don't know everything. I just know what I have seen and I've researched in in scripture and, and what the Lord has shown me. I am a sinner who has found bread, and I'm just passing that bread along. 
That is episode nine of Theology Low and Slow. Thank you for joining me. My name is Ryan, and we will see you guys next time.